Good morning. I'm feeling a lot more energized today. Josh, again, is already up at the new house. He is beating me every morning, which is kind of surprising. But now that I'm down here, we've got things we're gonna do right now to prep for dinner tonight. I have right on the stove there, a lasagna that I just pulled out of the freezer. I'm gonna have that thaw. And then we have the cauliflower from the garden and I wanna get this prepped so that it just seems like we're not eating dinner up there, we're eating lunch. And so I want dinner completely prepped and ready for me so that when I get back down here, I can just throw the cauliflower right in the oven, throw the lasagna in the oven and dinner will be ready for me. So let me show you how we're gonna get this prepped. I already pre-washed this cauliflower, so it's gonna be super easy. I'm just gonna cut it into florets, and then we'll season it up. I have a little bit of olive oil, crushed red pepper, and our homegrown dehydrated or freeze-dried garlic. You'll notice I did not put any salt on this cauliflower. If I put salt on it, it's gonna draw out the moisture and it's gonna get all watery and weird. So right before we roast it, we'll put the salt on it and stick it in the oven. So right now I'm gonna put this in the fridge and I didn't have to do any cooking this weekend other than this veggie prep. That was my goal when we did that food prep on Thursday was just to make our life a little bit easier over the weekend. And I think that might be kind of my habit until this whole, craziness of moving is over and maybe it'll be part of my normal routine moving forward i don't know i have lunch packed here now what i'm going to do well, i'm going to fill up the truck with wood we've got wood in the shop here and i'm going up there might as well not drive up there with an empty truck because gas is expensive right now and i try i'm trying to make our trips as efficient as possible and I think that this is one way we can do that. So this is the wood we're looking at. It's actually not as much as I remember, which is great. We'll be able to get that packed up pretty easily, pretty quickly. As I'm backing up, I see that there's a ladder behind me, but I figured the truck would just slowly push the ladder back. Oh, uh, you'll see what happens. The wood only took up about half the truck, so I went ahead and put that ladder in. I fixed it, no problems there. I put my bike in here and our leaf blower and our leaf blower fuel because it takes a specific type of fuel. And I just wanted to try to get it as full as possible. I was trying to think through of things that I don't think we're gonna need down here in the next, you know, three weeks or so. And that's what I put in here. I don't think I'm gonna have time to go on a bike ride. And I don't think we're gonna be doing any leaf blowing. I do have about five more things of, or six more things of wood down where I didn't bring it up before. Now, our new house, we don't need to heat our house primarily with wood. We heat this house primarily with wood, but this is kind of a backup for the power goes out or we just want a nice cozy environment. We wanna be able to have wood and I paid for this wood so it's worth moving. I do not wanna leave it here. And definitely we're probably gonna get more power outages up at the new house just because of where it's located and the wind and all those types of things. So having wood on hand as a backup for heat, awesome. And we know how to heat with wood. We've done it for two years now. So now I think I'm just gonna grab the lunch, the dogs, we're gonna head up to the new house.
this is how much wood I stacked the other day. And now that I have the truck empty, except for this wood, we're going to get it filled up. We got it done. I'm really excited about it. And I'm really happy with how full this lean-to is. I'm really happy that we have this. It's a great area to store wood. We'll be able to go in and out of the house in the winter without having to go into the elements to get the wood. I probably am gonna purchase enough wood to fill this whole area just for security of making sure that we have a way to heat our house all winter in the event that we lose power but I am grateful that we don't need to rely on this wood to heat our house all winter. It's just nice to have the option to do it as opposed to um, having to do it. So, and it just feels like a little bit of security to have this here. So now I have the truck all empty, which is a great feeling so we can fill it with something else. Inevitably, I did put the leaf blower and some of the other things that I grabbed from the house in here so that they're not gonna be in the garage taking up space where Josh is currently working. I don't know if that's where he wants that stuff long term, but it'll be fine for now. I already ate lunch before I tackled this wood project. So I think I'm gonna go inside and continue to do the finish work on the trim Josh is working on. This is where I'm gonna be working. Josh officially finished this room today. And that is one big accomplishment to have this done here. Yesterday I got about 50% of the finish work that I need to do in here. So that's what I'm gonna work on. I think we decided that we are not gonna put the blinds back up. We took the blinds down. We're gonna get those shade blinds. And a lot of you guys had talked about maybe tinting those windows and we have not yet looked into that, but we think that that might be a brilliant idea. We just need to do a little bit more research on that. So many of you guys gave that recommendation. I really appreciate it. So I'm excited to look into that and see what that looks like. And then another update, we got a couple bids back on the cost to have somebody else replace all of these. We're gonna do it ourselves. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna hire someone to rewire these outlets, put them in the floor, because we decided we are taking this wall down and rewiring that switch and that switch to these walls, but that's all we're gonna hire out. Josh knows how to change the, the outlets. He's replaced many of these in our lifetime throughout both of the houses we've owned. And the reason we were thinking about hiring someone is just the amount of time it's gonna take, but it's something we can do while we live here. And he is going to teach me how to do it. I was watching some videos on it. It looks relatively easy. I don't know about the light switches, but the outlets, there's only three wires you have to rewire in order to replace those. So I'm excited to learn a new skill when we, when we end up doing that. And I'm excited to get these replaced. But it was pretty pricey to pay somebody else to do the labor. So it's just always a matter of balancing time, money, skill level, and things like that. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited to learn a new skill when it comes to that. So now back to work for me in the sunroom to get that finished out. This is the door that Josh is moving on to. On this side of this door, there was some really fancy wainscoting type look and we want really, really simple. So we removed that and to balance these two sides out, whatever Josh does on this side, he's gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this side. So we'll show you what that looks like when he ends up doing that project. To fill in the nail holes, I just use this putty knife and sometimes I don't clean it when I'm done with it. So it's pretty easy just to clean off any excess. I use this specific spackle or putty that's designed for filling in nails on for trim work. And I take about a quarter size of that and I put it toward the end of the knife. And this amount will probably be enough to finish out this room because you clearly don't need very much in order to fill these holes. And I work really, really hard to get any excess putty off. 
When I first started doing this, I thought I should leave a little extra putty there so it's really full, but then it ends up being way, way, way more work in the end when you then have to go to sand it. So my advice if you're ever doing this is try to remove as much of that excess as possible. And I did want to say one thing here. These knee pads were a gift in my PO box and I went there this week and I just want to say thank you to every single one of you who has ever sent me a letter or a gift. It is incredibly humbling every time I go to my PO box and you guys are amazing. Even just the fact that you show up and watch my videos, like a video, comment, it's more than I could ask for. And I wanna just say thank you for being such a great supportive community. You guys see me working on my knees and that I don't have knee pads and how observant to think to send me such a really thoughtful gift. So this is just one example of many and I just wanna say I appreciate every single one of you who show up and are so supportive we have created an amazing community here. Uh, these knee pads are wonderful. Are good? Yeah. Nice. So nice. It makes sense. Yeah. I'm about halfway done with this room, which is pretty exciting. And Josh and I just talked through what we were gonna do with this door and this Wayne's coating area, or Wayne's cotting. <laughs> tomato, tomato. I say Wayne's coating, Josh says Wayne's cotting. And what we wanna do is I need to go get a bigger piece of this MDF because we only wanna put one of these styles going horizontal right here which it'll make more sense once we do it. And the MDF pieces that we purchased are too small to be able to do that because there has to be a seam with the ones I purchased. So I need to go buy a bigger sheet. They're a two by four foot sheet of MDF. And you can see this one's cut in half, so I obviously can't return that one. But we can't patch it to fit this area if we're only gonna have one style right at the top without having another seam somewhere else. So I'm gonna go run and grab that. Josh is double checking to make sure they have it at Home Depot before I take my time to drive there and get it. And he is gonna work on getting the front door done while I'm gone. So that's pretty exciting. We got the goods all loaded up. Now we're gonna bring it back to Josh. I drove up, got that piece to Josh, helped him for a little bit, and then I thought, you know what, it's time to come home and make dinner. I had this out on the counter. It's still mostly frozen. So this is gonna take a good probably hour and a half-ish to cook. So we're gonna get this in the oven. I'm not gonna put the, what's it called? Cauliflower in the oven. That'll only probably take about 15, 20, maybe 30 minutes to do that. So we're gonna get this lasagna in the oven. I've been resting upstairs. Josh is home. He actually put in the cauliflower for me and he seasoned it. Oh, that looks like it's almost done. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that. Thanks, Josh. Honestly, I've just been laying in bed watching YouTube videos, just resting. And this smells done. This has been in here for, oh goodness, an hour and 25 minutes or so. Maybe an hour and a, an hour and a half. Oh no. We got a little cheese on our foil. That's okay, no big deal. It is bubbling inside, I can see that, but I want it to brown just a little bit, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here with it uncovered for about 15 more minutes. And there is the cauliflower, absolutely beautiful. I'm honestly not super hungry, so I am going to just let Josh come down here and take it out in about 15 minutes once the top gets nice and browned. Um, ideally, you'd probably let it cool before you slice into it, but it's already 842, so he probably will just cut right into it, which is fine. And then um, he'll dish up himself some of this to take for lunch so he can enjoy lunch. I hope you all enjoyed hanging out with Josh and I over this weekend. It was super busy, super productive, and I'm glad that it's come to an end. I'm ready just to finish this evening out relaxing and just relaxing. <laughs> so if you guys enjoyed this, I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up. If you want to watch some of my other videos, I can post some right here that you can enjoy between now and my next upload. 
I hope you guys are having a fantastic day or evening or morning or whatever it may be for you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.